All right, hello guys. Just doing a really quick mic check to make sure that everything is working. If you guys can hear me, please let me know. Hi, please say hi in chat as you guys join to let me know you guys are here. Um, I know that we have some regular lurkers, which are awesome, um, but we do enjoy having a really active class when possible. Um, okay, so just to go over... Um, what we're going to be doing, by the way, for anyone who joins later or is watching a uh, recording, um, feel free to add any answers or any sentences that you want checked to the comments of this video after it goes live. And me and Phil will be happy to go over them and fix any sentences that you guys have. You know, that's a big part of improving your English. is being able to uh, see where your mistakes are uh, and learning a better way to do it. Um, today we are going to do pronunciation practice part one, part two, part, part three, part two if there's time, and writing test two if there's time. Uh, if you guys are joining us just now, this is an extremely important um, topic for vocabulary. Uh, the reason for this is there are a ton of part one questions and there are a ton of part three questions that are going to be about either children or your childhood. Obviously, part one will be about your childhood, but you may have to talk about um, the children in your country in part three. Uh, for example, what do young people like watching? What do young people uh, try to do for their work? Um, and so this, we are going to be talking about all of that uh, today. So I hope you guys stick around. Um, while you guys are here, by the way, um, please make sure you hit that like button if you like what you see. And uh, yeah, make sure that you guys are not watching a playback. Make sure you guys are live so that you guys can say hi in chat. Um, I do respond to you guys in chat because this is live. Uh, but yeah, let's jump into it. So I'm going to add one more section here. Uh, we are going to do vocab really quickly. Uh, this live stream is going to end at 9 o'clock. Uh, so remember, Saturday at 8 is when we are having live streams here. If you would like to see Phil, he is the our most successful YouTube videos. Uh, come here Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Taiwan time for our next live stream. Um, by the way, there are going to be a few uh, pictures. Uh, that we will be using for vocab, you can follow them right here and it will open up this wonderful little PowerPoint that we'll be looking at today. Um, next up, and finally, we do have some recommended TV shows. Remember, using TV shows is a great way to improve your English. Um, you can improve your listening ability, you can improve your ability to hear the little unstressed words in English, and you can improve your pronunciation by watching TV shows. Um, if you guys want to make sure you have the vocabulary and you can express yourself about your high school or your elementary school, these are four great TV shows. Uh, Riverdale is still ongoing, <laughs> um, and it gets extremely crazy. Um, so. If you guys want to check that one out, so popular right now. Teen Wolf is a little bit older, um, but I liked it. <laughs> I watched it when I was in college, but it was clearly meant for like high schoolers, young adults. Um, so this is another great thing. This is about a werewolf teenager, obviously. Um, Glee is a little bit older than Teen Wolf. Uh, but again, this is for people who like theater or musicals. I know a lot of... Uh, our viewers are Indian uh, or from India and I know musicals are really big in that culture um, so if you want to see like an American musical which I'm sure has nothing is not even close to as good as an Indian musical if you want to see what our mu musicals look like check out Glee uh, this is a high school musical uh, group 
Uh, and finally, one of my all-time favorites, it is a little dark, but Veronica Mars is a fantastic TV show um, about a high school detective. Um, so Veronica Mars uh, works with her dad, who is a private detective, and she solves crimes in high school. It is a little dark, I will warn you. Veronica Mars is the darkest thing here. Uh, Riverdale is sometimes dark, but it's like, it's goofy. It's, it's really bad, and so it doesn't matter how dark they go. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend these. If you guys want to see pictures, you guys can see them right here. We have Glee on the left, uh, uh, which is about a Glee club. We have Teen Wolf on the right, and then we have Veronica Mars and Riverdale. Riverdale is super popular right now. Okay. So let's keep going then. We're going to do a little bit of pronunciation practice to warm up. Um, remember, we're trying to match the stress time. We've talked about this in many other videos. Some words are stressed, others are not. Try to copy my voice exactly to get working. So I chose these sentences because they're going to be useful for you guys. So uh, make sure that you guys can say them just like me. When I was a kid, we used to go outside and play with the neighborhood kids. When I was a kid, we used to go outside and play with the neighborhood kids. Actually, that's a little weird saying kid twice. When I was young, there we go. When I was young, we used to go outside and play with the neighborhood kids. So again, this is a live stream. Afterward, you guys can go back and listen and say as much as you want. And again, I do recommend you highlight the stressed words before you guys try to copy me. Uh, by the way, just because I'm curious about your culture and you guys, um, was this true for you when you were young? Did you used to go outside and play with the neighborhood kids? When I was young, this is definitely something that we did, but I'm old now. I'm like 32. Um, I don't know if young people, even in America, do this anymore. I think most people stay inside and play video games. Um, so let me know in chat. Did Was this true for you guys? Did you go outside? Okay, let's do the second one. Again, I will say it three times. Try to copy my pronunciation exactly, since this is pronunciation practice. Way back in the day, when I was still in elementary school, we would walk up through the snow both ways to get to school. Way back in the day, when I was still in elementary school, we would walk uphill through the snow both ways to get to school. Way back in the day, when I was still in elementary school, we would walk uphill through the snow both ways to get to school. Okay, I want to point a few things out here. Way back in the day is nice. Obviously, if you're in high school right now, I know some of our viewers are in high school right now, you can't use this <laughs> because you're too young. <laughs> Way in back in the day means a long, long time ago. Uh, hello, Katea. Welcome. And hello, Asma. Welcome. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad that you had a time when you guys could play outside with your friends when you were young. Um, it's really not that popular anymore. <laughs> okay, so way back in the day, remember you can use this if you're old like me. Even if you're in like your mid-twenties, this would be okay. Um, also, this is something that's kind of funny. It's like a little bit of an inside joke for English speakers. Usually, if you ever talk to your grandparents or your parents about um, when they were in school, they always say that it was so much harder. Uh, like my grandpa would say, oh, it was so much harder when we were in school. You, you young people have it so easy. Um, and so they would say things like this. We would walk up through the snow both ways to get to school. That means when you walk to school, you go uphill. And when you come home from school, you also walk uphill. Which is ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. But this is something that we do uh, that people would say a lot. Um, and again, these are sentence frames. Hopefully, you guys can learn the parts that you don't need to change. And then after that, um, 
change the rest to be true for you. Okay, and let's do the third and final one before we move on to vocab. Looking back, I'd have to say I had a pretty normal childhood. Looking back, I'd have to say I had a pretty normal childhood. Looking back, I'd have to say I had a pretty normal childhood. <laughs> Katya, I'm glad you didn't have to walk up any hills. <laughs> Yes, but um, Katia, did like your parents ever uh, say that they had it really hard or your grandparents used to say they had it really hard when they were in school um, and how easy it is for you now? <laughs> um, okay, by the way, again, this is a sentence frame. You could change normal to anything else. You could change normal. I had a pretty terrible childhood. I had a pretty unusual childhood. I had a pretty, uh, what's another one? Uh, miserable. Miserable childhood, unusual childhood, a pretty great childhood. Now, of course, we should also be able to say why. So if I had a pretty normal childhood, what's a good follow up here? Does anyone know? Can anyone give me an example of a um, of like an example of why your childhood was normal or why your childhood was good? Let's actually change this to great. I had a pretty great childhood. Why is the childhood normal? I'll give one example, but I hope you guys can come up with some too. I had plenty of friends a bully or two and got pretty good grades. So this would be normal. But what if it was a great childhood? If you had a great childhood, what would that entail? What would it mean? Ah, uh, yeah. Looking back, I'd have to say I had a pretty great childhood. I had great friends who I got to see all the time. Okay, nice. If anyone has any others that they want to join, add, that's fine. And I had great friends is great asthma. Uh, I want to point out, I made it a little bit stronger by adding a relative clause here. And again, showing that this would show that you have higher level grammar. Okay. I guess nobody else had great childhoods, Asthma. I guess it was just you and me. <laughs> if you had a great childhood, please say why. Um, and while you type that, I will keep on moving. Let's go over the vocab next. Now, normally I ask you guys for some vocab. This time I've come up with a few things first and then I want you guys to add to it. Um, so for example, arts and crafts is something really common in childhood and camp. Hello, Linda, welcome. <laughs> Linda, I love your answer. I'm gonna throw that up here. Great. My mom didn't care about my grades, so my childhood is quite, or was quite relaxed. I like that one, Linda. I do want to point out two things that you need to be careful about doing, and that is making sure that you're using past tense when you're talking about the past. Um, and then higher level, care about my grades. This is how a native speaker would say it. Okay, nice. And then I saw another one for asthma. And that's great. Uh, we got to play outdoors pretty often. 
and had a ton of games that we could play. So this one is for Asma, and then finally one for Katia. And that looks like a pretty great one too. I didn't have to work. I had a lot of friends, and I didn't have any bullies around either. I almost misread that as bullets, and that would be t <laughs> that would be a low bar. Oh, and there were no bullets. <laughs> By the way, thank you so much for being so active, you guys. This is great. This is a lot more fun than normal, uh, where it's just me talking. So I had a lot of friends and didn't have any bullies around either. Yeah, Katia, that's really good. I didn't have too much I needed to change there. Nice. Um... Yeah, I didn't have to work. So I'll do one long one. I'll do my favorite, and I think that's Katia's. Um, <laughs> so I'll say the whole thing, just in case you guys want to practice afterwards. Looking back, I'd have to say I had a pretty great childhood. Uh, my mom didn't care about my grades, so my childhood was quite relaxed. Or was pretty chill. Both work. Also, one last thing that I want to point out for a common problem, make sure you got that plural, play outdoors with an S. Um, all right, let's move on to the vocab. You guys did a great job. Thanks so much for putting that in. Um, again, I'm going to go over some activities, but if you guys have extra activities that you don't sh see on the list, please let me know and I will be more than happy to add it. This is a resource for you guys. Uh, by the way, if anyone is new, please know that in the... Uh, description you guys can click this link and it will open up the whole thing that you can copy and paste from and do whatever you want uh, this is all a free resource for you guys so activities we have arts and crafts uh, by the way the collocation that we use is do arts and crafts uh, so you can make a scrapbook by the way this is an example of a scrapbook uh, so it's like a, a notebook that you put papers or clippings or maps in. You make it really beautiful. Um, another thing is draw in our sketchbooks. These are notebooks that are made for drawing. Um, play outside with the neighborhood, with the neighborhood kids. Uh, please be careful. Neighborhood kids is the adjective and kids. This is different than the neighbors. So please don't delete kids. If you say play outside with the neighborhood, that means you're playing with a place. That's very weird. It makes you sound like you're God. I'm playing with the neighborhood. <laughs> they are all like ants to me. <laughs> By the way, when you play with the neighborhood kids, <laughs> you can play things like tag, king of the hill, play pretend. Um, if you guys don't know any of these, please let me know in chat and I can explain them. Also, if you guys can think of any arts and crafts that you did when you were a kid, or if you can think of other games that you played when you were uh, playing outside, please let me know so I can add it to the list. <laughs> yes. Uh, stay inside and game all day. Stay outside and game all afternoon. I think this is what most people do nowadays, which is not so good. It's not so healthy. <laughs> and then... Um, do our homework on the bus ride to school. Did anyone do this? Did anyone not do their homework at home? And then, you know, on the 30 minute or 40 minute bus ride, you did your homework while you were going to school or right before class. Do we have any bad elementary school students here? Do we have any bad high school students? Ah, oh, I see some more. Hello, Rag, have long time no see. Welcome. Okay. And I see cricket as another game that people played. So these are more like um, organized sports. So this is like soccer, basketball, and then cricket, which is really interesting because in America we don't play cricket at all. Um, but I know it's super popular in other places. Uh, so here we would say play with Play-Doh and make things out of clay make a play um, cup or pot or sculpture okay these are great yeah play with play-doh I remember play-doh okay nice 
Um, so again, this is something that a lot of people struggle with because they don't know the names of games that they would play outside. So if you guys don't know how to say a game that you played in your childhood, feel free to ask me. <laughs> By the way, this is this is not for young people, but if you guys really want to <laughs> learn about um, learn about uh, children's games in Korea, in the Korean culture, Squid Games was a really good show. Only for adults, but this was a great show. I highly recommend it if you guys have time. This is Korean, so it won't help your English, but still really good. Okay. Badminton is another great one. And Jigsaw Puzzle Blocks. Okay, let me add those up here. Um, this was Badminton. Nice. And then Jigsaw Puzzle. I would put that as like an indoor game. It's not an arts and crafts. It's a game. So I would do puzzles. Uh, from the Sunday newspaper or I would put together a jigsaw puzzle by the way while we're on this does anyone know any other types of puzzles do you guys know Sudoku um, or a crossword puzzle um, what are some other puzzle games Scrabble but this is more a game a board game. So Sudoku is with numbers. Okay, nice. So in the afternoon with my dad. So my dad was really boring. He did puzzles. <laughs> I, I'm just kidding. If you like puzzles, you do you. All right, this is my favorite part right here. And by the way, um, with any of these words, if so one thing that me and Phil say is that learning the word is not enough. Learning the definition or the meaning of the word is not enough. Uh, your job is to be able to use the word in a sentence. So if there's any vocab here that you just, that you know but you don't know how to use, it's okay to put it in a sentence and then put it in chat or leave a comment. And again, I can fix it for you. So let's look at these positions in the high school hierarchy. Um, and let me make sure that there weren't any more. Okay, yeah. So this is huge in American high school, or it used to be maybe 10, 20 years ago. Um, I don't know if this is universal, so I would love to hear about your guys' experience. Do you have the same positions? Do you have the same roles or niches in your high school. Um, yeah, as my, a tattletale. Uh, so let me go through the ones that I know people don't know. A teacher's pet is a person who always does what the teacher says, always tries to brown nose the teacher. Usually students don't like a teacher's pet, uh, which, you know, I never really understood because I was totally a teacher's pet. <laughs> the teachers loved me. And I don't know why people didn't like me because of that. If anyone could explain that to me, I still don't understand why. Um, a tattletale. This is more for elementary school. Um, it actually turns into a much worse word when we get become adults. Um, and that's a snitch. Uh, this is for adult criminals. And a tattletale is for children. Uh, so, for example... The sentence that we would use is, don't be a tattletale. Uh, she tattled on me. <laughs> so a tattletale is a person who, um, who tells the teacher or who tells the adult when someone else breaks a rule. So did you guys ever have this situation where like, um, <laughs> they just envied me, thank you. <laughs> Um, so, so a tattletale, like, did you guys ever have this situation where, like, the teacher left the room and then some kid, you know, made a mess or did something bad and then the teacher comes back and then the tattletale told the teacher about the other kid. 
Um, so again, in like childhood, like being a tattletale was not a good thing. People didn't like it. Like the group of children didn't like you if you told the teacher about any broken rules. So anyone hear a tattletale? Did anyone always go crying to the teacher? Um, and again, it turns into a snitch for criminals. This is a criminal who tells the police about other criminals. Um, they don't live very long. We have a word for that. Um, we have snitches get stitches. Uh, which again means that you will get beaten up or killed if you snitch on people. Okay, so that's the fun one, a tattletale. By the way, um, Raghav, were you asking about uh, hierarchy? Okay. Uh, let's go down to nerd. Uh, we have nerd, theater geek, jock, straight A student, cheerleader. Um, are any of these new or did you guys know them already? Please let me know in chat if any of these are new. Um, and by the way, this is an example of a nerd. So nerds like nerdy things. Um, nerds like things like... I can't relate, I had a happy childhood. <laughs> um, being a tattletale doesn't make your childhood terrible. It's just a role that people have, or a thing that children do on each other. Um, Nerdy things have become popular, like Marvel comics and movies, and D&D. D&D is Dungeons and Dragons, by the way. Um, I play D&D, but I'm a pretty nerdy guy. <laughs> Was anyone a nerd? Um, a nerd is someone who likes to study. Someone who isn't cool and likes or enjoys studying okay or someone who likes weird things a theater geek is someone who loves theater a jock is someone who is um really sporty a really sporty person someone on the s football team would be a jock usually they're quite popular They are quite popular. Also, male. I, I've i never heard of female jocks. I think it's only a term to describe guys. Yeah, that's weird. I never noticed that before. Okay. Then we have a straight A student. Uh, this is a very useful collocation. I hope you guys were straight A students. Um, I was a straight A student in high school because my parents pushed me. Uh, and then I went to college, and I was no longer a straight-A student. If anyone is still in high school, um, don't become lazy when you go to college, trust me. Uh, cheerleader, one of the popular kids. And then we have uh, three more that might be new to you. A loner, a goth, and a bully. Again, if any of these are new, please let me know, and I can describe them. A loner is someone who doesn't have friends. Uh, this is a goth. Someone who wears really dark makeup, this can be guys or girls, um, and is usually antisocial and usually says very depressing things. Okay, and then for a bully, I made sure to add some sentences here. A lot of people use this wrong. It can be a noun or a verb. Uh, and a bully has a victim, so I was a victim of bullying. Beth would always bully me. She would push me in the halls and steal my lunch money. This used to be something that, like, when you said bully, this is what you thought they did. Do bullies still do this? Oh, bullies have become terrible, haven't they? Because they're cyberbullying. Uh, which I heard is quite serious. Okay. So, again, uh, asthma. Uh, this is a goth. It is someone in high school who is usually antisocial. That means they don't have many friends or they are friends with other goths and they usually uh, stay, stay apart from everyone else and they wear heavy makeup. Um, usually dark black colors is what they wear and um, they usually say depressing things. I don't know if goths still exist. They might be, have become cool. 
I don't know. I haven't been in high school in 20 years? 10 years? 15 years. I'm not that old. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, here are some sentences that hopefully can help you out. Uh, I was just an average kid. I was just your typical kid. Again, these are nice high-level uh, sentences you can use to describe something instead of I was a child. I was just an average kid. I was your typical kid. I was a pretty weird kid. This last one was me. I was a pretty weird kid. I, I'm not afraid to admit that. Um, okay, let's go to subjects. Now, you guys know the basic subjects. We have math, history, geography, social studies, civics, science, but it's important that you learn the subjects under that so you can be more specific. Uh, this, of course, will raise your vocab score on the test. So in science, we have seventh grade science, we have physics, chemistry, biology, AP, environmental science. Um, AP means that it's a college class that you take in high school. <laughs> Linda is a va vampire. Um, <laughs> that is, a, they're not vampires, um, but maybe they want to be vampires. They're the kids in school who wanted to be vampires. I wasn't a goth, I couldn't really tell you. I was a nerd, so I can't actually tell you about uh, what they were into or what they wanted to be when they grew up. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, make sure that you guys can go deeper. Again, if you guys know more science, um, let me know. Up here with math, I want to make sure you guys have a few more. We have algebra. We have um, trig. We have calculus. Um, do you guys know of any other math that you might have taken in high school or elementary school? We learned basic addition and multiplication. Um, okay, let's keep going because I know you guys want to practice your speaking. Uh, so we're just really going to quickly go over places. I have a few of these in the pictures. This is a playground. This is the only time you would use playground. I know in a few different languages, playgrounds can also mean tracks, like where you run at school. A track is a track. This is a playground. This is the only time you would say playground. Be careful with your translation. A playground is a place where children play. Um, this is a board game cafe. These have become a lot more popular in the States. Uh, it used to be a place where nerdy people go, like me, but now a lot more people go there. If you haven't gone to a board game shop, uh, make sure you guys check it out. Oh man, I see you guys saying geometry. Yeah, how did I forget geometry? Jeez. Geometry. 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 Okay. Yeah, that's how you spell it with two E's. <laughs> Um, abacus. An abacus is a tool. Um, we learned to do math using an abacus. Uh, we, we learned to do math. We learned to do addition and subtraction. Oh man. I'm not going to lie, I'm really glad that you said abacus there, because an abacus is a very old tool. Um, <laughs> it means that you're old, <laughs> which makes me feel young, yeah. <laughs> um, and mental math. I can do uh, multiplication up until 13 by 13 in my head so in my head is how we would probably say it um yeah okay so again places we have the playground my friend's backyard this is which really useful um thing to say uh, people probably played in their friend's backyard or at my friend's house. 
but they forget to say it when they're talking about their childhood. Uh, so that's why I'm bringing it up. A park in my neighborhood is nice, the local swimming pool, the local rec center, um, basketball courts, an internet cafe, and a board game shop. And again, this is a board game shop, and this is an internet cafe. Nerdy, okay. All right, so those were the places, nice. If there's any more places, <laughs> Asma says it's it's coming again. Um, and Kaida says, really? Uh, maybe it's coming back, I don't know. <laughs> I don't teach math. I have a friend who teaches math, I'll, I'll ask him. Okay, now it's time for speaking part one and then speaking part three. Uh, if you haven't done this before, you guys need to tell me questions that you think you will see on speaking part one. After you guys give me as many as you can, then we answer them and I'll fix them. Uh, finally, we'll do the same with speaking part three. Now, speaking part one uh, is always going to be about you and your experiences. Sometimes it may be about your country, but it's always going to be something personal and easy that you can explain with your own experiences. Now, again, today's lesson is very important because you may have to talk about your childhood in many different speaking part one topics. Um, there's usually at least one question about your childhood in a topic. So what did you want to be when you were young? This was from our last one when we talked about the police. Um, when you were a kid, did you... This is a really popular way that they start. So can you guys help me out? Can you guys um, come up with a few questions in speaking part one? And maybe can you finish this sentence? Because again, this is a really popular one. Uh, and the same thing, did you, mm -mm -mm, when you were a child? Or did you, doo -doo -doo, when you were young? So can you guys help me out? Uh, give me some speaking part one questions. Uh, we'll take maybe one or two minutes to do this and then we'll start answering them. Uh, when we answer them, I prefer when you guys give me answers, just like you guys have been doing. Uh, but of course, you guys can also ask me if uh, there's if you want me to give a high level answer for you. So, can you guys help me out? Give me some of those beautiful questions. Uh, I'm going to go get myself some water, and when I come back, I'll put what you guys say up here. Give me some questions, guys. Yeah. I know that it takes a little bit of time to type. That's perfectly okay. I wish I had some like elevator music I could play while you guys are uh, typing your questions into chat. Um, I would sing, but then I would scare all of you guys away. <laughs> okay, these are great guys. Thank you. I'm so glad I don't have to sing. Uh, so let me just copy some of these over. And then of course, if you guys want to answer any of them, this is also okay. Did you learn any skill during childhood? Um, and then another one. Who is your role model model when you were a child? Nice. Another way you could say this is, who was your childhood role model? I like that one. That's really interesting. Um, I bet you, for most people, it's going to be my dad. What was your favorite subject when you were young? Ooh, nice. 
when you were a kid, did you do any sports? So this is exactly what I mean. In part one, there are so... There are so many different topics where you may have to talk about your childhood. So being able to talk about the things that you did when you were a kid, super important. Um, any that would go with this? Oh, I like that one. Uh, Rainish. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. Uh, but that is very clearly a speaking part two question, which is perfectly fine. Um, I will throw that where it belongs. And then, of course, at the end, if there's time, we can do some of that. Now, I don't want to spend too much time here, so feel free to answer any of these questions. Again, you can see them by going to the video and then in the description, the very first link, if you just click it and then scroll down to page 10 or 9, um, you guys can read it yourself. Uh, but yeah, in chat, please write an answer to any of these questions um, and then I will fix it for you. Also, if you guys would like me to answer one, just let me know. And let me just add one more that just came to mind. Um, when you were a kid, did you have enough free time? When you were a kid, did you play too many video games? <laughs> uh, when you were a kid, did you often go to the park? Okay. So here are a few more that just came to mind that you guys may want to check out. Um, did you help someone when you were a child? Okay. Let me put that in here. Nice. So yeah, take a minute, try to answer one. If you want me to answer one, just let me know in chat. Um, and yeah, we can get on it. Did you help someone when you were a child? Uh, and I do want to point this out. This is a common mistake. Make sure you guys don't make it. Did you help someone? Uh, in your childhood? when you were a child versus in your childhood. Okay. All right, guys. Um, I will, again, not sing and wait for you guys to type an answer to any of these. Um, I'll go over maybe three or four of them, and then we'll move to part three. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Yamuna. And Rajis put an answer and then retracted it. <laughs> All right. So, um, I'll take one more minute. If you guys want to put your answers, please do. And if you want me to answer a question, just tell me which question to answer. I'd love to answer at least one of these for you if you guys are too shy to put your answers in. If I'm not giving you guys enough time to type your answer to these, don't worry. 
in the chat so in the in the comments of this video after we put the video up feel free to leave a comment with your answer to any of these questions and then me and phil will go back and check them for you um so if you're a slow typer don't worry we've got you uh which one of these would you guys like me to answer while people are still typing I'll go get some water. When I come back, I hope to see at least one question you want me to answer and or some answers yourself. <laughs> so sad I um I just realized that I have been drinking coke and coke has caffeine and I never drink coffee I never drink soda and I'm pretty sure I'm going to now stay up all night because I drank this coke jeez oh, <laughs> so sad my sleep gone forever okay I see Kayata and Ranish have left answers, which is fantastic. Uh, let me and let me put them where they belong and uh, take a look at them. I used to vo do volunteer work as a schoolgirl. I'd clean the parks and streets. Okay. Hmm. Uh, sorry, uh, Kat Katia. Uh, can you tell me which one you were answering? I think it's the um, I think it's this one, right? Okay, let me just throw that up here. Katia, I'm not gonna lie. I don't see any more problems with this sentence. Did you used to help someone in your childhood? I used to do volunteer work as a schoolgirl. I'd help clean the parks and streets. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, and you're definitely helping people. I think this counts as helping. So again, this is just a nice extra little thing that you can add, but honestly, your answer by itself was fine. Okay. And Ranjish, which was cricket. Okay. And sorry, Ranjis, which one were you answering? I think, did you have enough free time? Is this what you were answering? I think that this is the one. So let me throw that up there. And thank you so much, guys, for being brave and putting your answers up here. Um, it really is a brave thing. You are brave people. And more importantly, it will 100% help you with your English. So were you, when you were a kid, did you have enough free time? Yes. During childhood, after finishing my academic program, I got, I, I had time. to play my favorite sport which was cricket and then I'm going to use a different CC word here um, a CC word is a word that connects ideas or sentences as well as spend time with my family during dinner during dinner time okay um, I'm just going to delete time dinner time is perfectly fine but during dinner is a little bit better Okay, so um, I hope you see I did change a few little things. I'm going to highlight them uh, because these little mistakes do lower your grammar score if you make them when you're speaking. But the answer itself, the content of the answer was quite good. Yes, during childhood, after finishing my academic program, 
I had time to play my favorite sport, which was cricket. So I'm going to add some commas here. Make sure that um, you have the right pauses. Uh, this is a non-defining relative clause, so there is a pause. To play my favorite sport, which was cricket, as well as spend time with my family during dinner. Yeah, nice, fantastic answer. And Raj, I got it Raj, thanks. Um, and nailed it. Okay, and finally Asma. Um, so what's next? While well, I'm helping Asma, uh, we're gonna do the same thing with speaking part three. Please come up with a bunch of part three questions about childhood. And again, these are remarkably common, especially in the first uh, set of questions that you may get. Um, so this could be about children in your country. This could be about children, uh, children in general, or this could even be about comparing uh, children to adults. Okay, so these are like the topics or this can be about many, many different topics. Um, but can you guys come up with some speaking part three questions um, about children or childhood? Again, these are quite common for a lot of different topics. For example, if the, if the topic is books, you may have to talk about the books that young people like um, in your country. Or you may have, to, if the topic is like movies or TV shows, what type of movies do young people like? And then that might be, do young people and old people like the same kinds of movies? So let me just throw those up here as examples. What type of TV shows do young people like? Do young people and old people like the same kinds of books. These are just some examples. So please come up with some of your own while I'm helping Asma and Raghav with their answers. Okay, and Asma, you are on fire. Got another one out already. All right. How have children's pastime activities changed over recent years. This is a fantastic one. Okay, and while you guys please continue typing part three speaking questions, in the meantime, I am going to answer uh, Rupinder. Hi Rupinder, long time no see. And Asma's answers. We had a long list of nine lectures on our timetable. Uh, the most awaited one games period. Okay, so research, recess. <laughs> I like your answer, Asma. Let me find the question that you were answering. What was your favorite class? Okay. I think this is the one that Esma was answering. Let me just throw hers up here. And again, I want to remind you guys, you guys can totally leave comments with answers and me and Phil will go back and look at them for you. Okay, we had a long list of nine lectures on our timetable. So this would probably be schedule on our school schedule. And the most awaited one was the games period. Also called recess in the West. So the West being America and the UK. As soon as the teacher would whistle, indicating us to run to the playground of the school, we all would. Okay, nice grammar. This is a beautiful high-level sentence. If you guys want to try to steal it, go ahead. I like thieves. <laughs> there are no tattletales here. No one will tattle on you for stealing a sentence. Okay, and then also we had uh, Rupinders. Yeah, when I was a child, I had a quality of free time after school. 
Okay, so let's put that one right here for Rupinder. All right, yeah, I like how you're answering so casually. This is perfect. I'm going to highlight this for you. Yeah, when I was a child. So again, I'm going to highlight the things that need to be said that were missed. So when I was a child, I had a quality of free time is not quite right. I had a lot of free time after school. And I spent, uh, the past tense, I spent most of this time with my mother while watching her doing house chores and in the park with my grandfather. Oh, this is so nice. Rupinder, you had such a pleasant childhood. Oh man, so lucky. Okay, nice. Okay. And then I see another one for Raj. Thank you, Raj, for the part three question. Um, what difference can you see? Okay. What difference can you see in your childhood hobbies and the hobbies you have now? Ooh. Um, this, okay. This is a good one, but you wouldn't actually see it. Not in part three too much about you so this is this is actually um this is a great question but we do need to modify it a little bit to make it a real part three question so what difference can you see in the hobbies of children and those of adults okay Remember, part three questions are always going to be about um, the topic in general, so keep this in mind. Um, a lot of students who aren't prepared for the test, uh, they go and they take the test, and unfortunately, they misunderstand the question, and they answer it about their own personal experience. You can use personal experience as a detail, but you should always directly answer the question in general terms first. Okay. Nice. Oh man, you guys are on fire today. I'm loving this. Okay. And uh, Yamuna, welcome. I spent my childhood in the countryside, so I got no chance to visit parks. However, I used to go to the forest nearby my house and cherish the activities of the wildlife. Okay. That was clearly about parks. Good job being on topic and answering it directly. Um, it is just a little bit interesting. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're true. That's right. I never thought about that before. Parks are a cities thing. They totally are a thing for cities. When you're in the countryside, there's no parks because everywhere is a park. <laughs> so I had no chance to visit parks. However, I used to go to the forest nearby my house near my house and cherish be careful of near versus nearby near versus nearby okay and cherish the activities of the wildlife okay um by the way cherish is not quite the right word here what would i say instead however i used to go to the forest near my house and and observe the wildlife or watch the wildlife um yeah you cherish memories um i really cherish my childhood memories I really cherish the time I had in the forest or the memories I have of being in 
that forest. Okay, thank you so much. I'm glad that you put that up there. Hopefully now we have some good sentences to use cherish with and we know how to use it correctly. Okay, and watch the wildlife. Observe the wildlife. Yeah, nice, fantastic. Um, asthma, another great question. And actually, I really want to know the answer to that. I want people to answer that one for me. Was your childhood safe or is it safer now? So again, asthma, we need to be a little bit careful with this one because that's more of a part one question. Part three will be more general. So we're going to change it just a little bit because the, the topic is great, just like the one from Rupinder. Um, so was it safe for children? back when you were a child. Is it safer now? Now this is perfect. I actually am really interested in what people say about this. Um, because in America, I, I can tell you the feeling, but I can't tell you the numbers. I can't tell you the facts. Um, but I do know before I was a kid, so I'm 30 now, but when my when my parents were, were kids, they used to go outside all the time. They used to go really far from their houses. They used to stay out late after the sun went down um, and it was safe or it was considered safe. Now there's so much uh, helicopter parenting and overprotective parents. Uh, so those are great words. Uh, let me put that. There are too many helicopter parents there are too many overprotective parents uh, and people are afraid of their children getting even really minor hurt in the west in america in the uk and so it's the i've read some articles that say that it's actually damaging because people don't know how to deal with pain or uncertainty um, because their parents protected them too much do you guys have that in your culture? Do you guys have, like, are, are your parents in your cultures very protective or do they let you do whatever you want to do? Whatever you want to do. I really want to know. I find this really, really interesting to talk about. Um... Okay, and then while you guys are thinking about that, let me take a look. Well, in India, the majority of youngsters like to watch crime and science-based TV shows. Apart from that, comedy and romantic shows generally gain in popularity among the younger generation. Nice, Rupinder. Just one little thing that I'm going to change for your answer. Uh, we're missing a we're missing an, a B verb. So well, in India, the majority. Make sure you have that. The majority of youngsters with that S um, like to watch crime and science-based TV shows. This is this is perfect. Um, apart from that, comma comedy and romantic shows so this would be comedies and romantic shows have recently gained in popularity have recently gained in popularity among the younger generation okay the content here was fine these were just little tiny grammar mistakes that can knock you down but honestly the the meaning was so clear um, yeah okay uh this is a good answer it's direct it's on point um yeah a follow-up question that you may have to answer by the way and for anyone new to ielts part three is tough because after you answer the first question they will ask you a follow-up question based on what you said so a good follow-up question that you may have to answer is which is the most popular or is there any difference 
between what boys and girls are watching. Okay, so these are possible follow-up questions you may have to answer. Okay, Rupinder, thank you so much for these answers. Um, and no problem, Yamuna. Thanks for watching. Um, and which, uh, so Asma, no problem for fixing the vocab. Um, what did you want me to answer? Uh, can you tell me which, uh, <laughs> you want me to answer the one about childhood being safe? Um, oh, nice. You're welcome. Okay. And one more for Raj. I think it was f more safer for kids in old times rather than now. Okay, let me put that up. Ah, why is it orange? <laughs> okay, let's fix it. And then, unfortunately, I have to say this is the last one because I do have to take out the trash. I have jobs to do, domestic duties, but you guys have been 100% amazing this live stream. Um, again, feel free to leave your own leave your own answers in the comments if I was moving too fast or if there's one that you want me to answer. Just let me know, and I will be more than happy to leave it in the uh, in the comments of this video. Um, and again, if you like what you see, don't forget to like um, and let me fix this last one and then we will be saying goodbye. Thank you so much everyone for being here. Um, so I think it was safer. Be careful, more safer. There's already the ER. Um, English is, the, is a kind of language where you will only have one marker. So if you have, you will only have one S, you will only have one past tense marker, and here you will only have one R. More is two Rs. So I think it was safer for kids in the old times rather than now. Nice, because people were more responsible and indulgent, need the adjective here, and indulgent with their children. However, in the modern era, oh, there's little words. I know where these mistakes are coming from. They're not grammar mistakes, they're pronunciation and listening mistakes. You don't hear them and so you don't say them. However, in the modern era, people, uh, are just chasing money over relationships. Okay. This part um, is not actually on topic. I don't understand how this is making it safer for kids. Um, so this is an example of bad support. And this is the first time that I've seen you make this mistake, uh, Rupinder. So it's interesting to see it here. Um, to give you a better supporting detail, I would go for, um, nowadays, people aren't paying enough attention to their kids because they are too busy trying to make a living. Uh, is that what you're trying to say? Uh, remember, English speakers, uh, sorry, English listeners and English readers um, are stupid. You need to say every connection or there is no connection. That's why this was off topic and this is not off topic because people aren't paying attention is connected to why it's not as safe anymore. Um, these kids are being left alone and hurting themselves or suffering mentally and emotionally. Okay, so I hope that this helped you guys. I'm really glad that we saw this kind of mistake because this is a really common mistake. In English, we are a low context language, a low context culture, and this means you need to say every connection. If you don't say the connection, there is no connection. Okay, you guys have been fantastic. 
Thank you so much. And sorry, this was Raj's answer. Yes. Uh, sorry, Rupinder. Um, you guys were awesome. Remember, you guys can always go back and leave a comment. Um, I hope you guys found this useful. Uh, if you did, please tell us in the comments. Uh, make the algorithm gods happy. Um, and yeah, keep working hard. Keep doing your best on your IELTS exam. I believe in you. You can make your goals happen. Uh, good luck and see you next time. Remember, Tuesday at 8 p.m. Taiwan time, same as this time, you can say hi to Phil, work on your speaking, and I hope to see you guys next Saturday. Bye, everybody. Have a great uh, rest of your weekend.